Crafting a finisher is a fine art. Having to look brutal enough to end a contest convincingly, whilst also being simple enough to be performed for the foreseeable future, it is no easy feat to land on this character-defining match ender. In 2020, we now seem to live in an age of wrestling where the elaborate has overtaken the efficient. And some of the current crop of WWE stars have paid the price for not choosing a simpler way of concluding a bout. Some of these finishers may look impressive, but you can bet your ass that they are too complicated or nonsensical to get over with a live crowd in the long run. I'm Gareth from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 WWE finishers that don't make sense. Number 10, Lumbar Check. Having been a member of the main roster since April 2019, you would have hoped that Cedric Alexander's acrobatic moveset and instant likability would have catapulted him into a decent spot on the card upon entry. Yet after losing a US title feud with AJ Styles, Alexander is nowhere to be seen. It could be easy to point to the fact that creative doesn't have anything for him right now, but perhaps an introspective look at his current finisher could in fact be the answer. The lumbar check which involves Alexander throwing his opponent into the air before drawing his knees up for them to land on is a visually impressive maneuver, but requires the recipient to possess equal athletic ability to pull off convincingly. This then leaves the audience disbelieving the significance of the move as the victim looks as though they are in on the act. Could you imagine Big Show or even Braun Strowman trying to take this? Bye bye Cedric. Adopting a move with more of a striking ground-based origin would prove beneficial for this future star getting the kind of response he so desperately deserves. Number 9, Pop-Up Powerbomb. Kevin Owens had quite the start to life on WWE's main roster. I mean, how do you even follow Pop-Up Powerbomb in John Cena on your first night? It turns out you don't, really, and Owens struggled to feel quite as hot as he did in those fledgling months on the big time stage. His ability on the mic was unquestionable, and when he was allowed to play the sarcastic anti-hero, he could be untouchable. However, the one outlying issue in KO's makeup had always been something that was hiding in plain sight. His finisher. Again, it wasn't that the move looked bad, it just didn't have that game-changing effect that his successful contemporaries had already obtained. Also, having to prep the move by throwing your opponents against the ropes would surely give anyone with half a brain cell the indication as to what was coming, so the audience never fully bought into the move being all that logical. Number 8, Bitter End. Pete Dunne has come of age as a vicious slugger who revels in contorting his unsuspecting victim's body parts. It's hard to fault Dunne for having a technically proficient moveset that's also equipped with a few flashy crowd poppers. However, his bitter end finisher does require a bit of dissecting. The move looks powerful enough, but the intricacy that is required to spin his opponent after he's launched them into the air from a pump handle position and then catch them in time to drill them into the mat must be a tad difficult to execute night after night. It's hard enough to explain. It also looks a little too pretty, and that definitely clashes with the character done as crafted. When you go by the moniker of Bruiserweight, surely a bone-shattering strike or simple yet catastrophic slam would force the crowd to stand up and take notice of someone who has the potential to bully the entire company. Number 7, 630 Splash. Ricochet was never going to have trouble getting the casual audience to understand what he was all about. Selling like a lunatic and flying like Superman. My god, am I glad I wore this t-shirt today. Yet, WWE have been seemingly reluctant to strap a rocket to his back, and that can possibly be traced back to his top rope 630 splash. Resembling nothing that the fans at home of WWE's upper management have ever seen before, the move sees Ricochet rotating a ridiculous amount of times before landing on his opponent in a senton position. I'm not going to try that. It's a fascinating sight, yet you can't help but wonder how long he'll be able to keep it in his arsenal for. Wrestlers aren't immortal and there will come a time when Ricochet won't be able to perform this unbelievable maneuver and that could dilute his crowd reaction going forward, which is something WWE will be more than aware of. There's also the risk of injury that comes with age, so it was more than wise for Ricochet to add the Coldbreaker as an alternative finisher in order to consolidate his presence as a fan favourite. Number 6, Feast Your Eyes. Ring of Honor alumni Dominic Dijakovic has been making a lot of noise in the former developmental brand. The only major flaw in Dijakovic's otherwise stellar presentation would be his finishing move, Feast Your Eyes. <sighs> 
Jarring name aside, the move is simply too tricky to land perfectly every single time and encourages the potential for meme-worthy botches. Also, when the torture rack transitions into the knee to the face, some opponents feel the need to land on their feet before taking the impact. Obviously, safety comes first when performing such a complex maneuver, but this setting of the feet before taking a shot dilutes the severity and realism of the impending blow. Standing at six foot seven inches tall, Dijakovic doesn't need to waste his time performing a complicated match killer like his feasterized finisher. A simple power play or monster strike would definitely get himself over just fine. Number five, Murphy's Law. A man with Buddy Murphy's outstanding character and in-ring capabilities should, without question, be in the spotlight more than what he is. The former cruiserweight champion has shown time and time again that he can hang with the likes of Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan, yet WWE have seemed reluctant to pull the trigger on him. Thankfully, he's recently been ushered into Seth Rollins' new stable. Yet there's one thing that could be holding him back as a potential top star. He needs to start out that finisher. Murphy's Law lacks the shock factor of, say, an F5 or an RKO, as it plainly has too much going on for its own good. Starting out in a pump handle, Murphy hoists his rival onto his shoulders and then whips them at high speed to the mat. A cleaner and concise way of finishing a match would definitely aid Murphy win over the WWE hierarchy by provoking an unignorable pop upon execution and replacing a move that, while pleasing to watch, waters down whatever drama Murphy has conjured up in the building. Up. Number four, Neutralizer. Cesaro's finisher suffers from a similar problem to that of Buddy Murphy's, in that it takes too bloody long to pull off, but that's just the start. You know by now how supremely gifted he is in the ring, and how much he has improved in both character and mic work. So with this many elements of his game being obviously up to standard, the only explanation for his lack of single spotlight or serious crowd investment has to be the aptly named Neutralizer. You can't hide from it, the move is just, well, boring. It takes an age to set up, looks cool for like, what, two seconds, and then Cesaro literally falls onto his opponent. At this point, it may be a tad late in the day for Cesaro to change up his moveset, but even if Cesaro's swing into a sharpshooter was more efficient and over than this crowd neutralizer. Number three, SOS. Kofi Kingston has tried a couple of changes over the years, feeling these could improve his chances of being considered in the main event bracket. He altered his attire, his attitude, and sometimes even shifted to a different finishing move than his trademark Trouble in Paradise spinning kick. No, not gonna try that one either. This attempt being his SOS finisher, which proved to be a failed experiment of a crowd popping full stop. Tying his opponent's arm up, Kingston then tucked behind his enemy and then flipped forward. This rotation resulted in the momentum spinning his adversary onto their neck slash back and scored him the odd victory upon its inception. The issue lay in its convoluted setup and the fact that it didn't look too punishing to be on the receiving end of. A pretty sight it may have been, but there's a reason that Kingston won his WWE title off the back of a world time trouble in paradise and not the SOS. Number two, imploding 450. Coming into last year's WrestleMania, Mustafa Ali was a hot commodity who was apparently being positioned in the Kofi Kingston spot going into the elimination chamber before a concussion spoiled the party. I just, I hate it. I hate it when that happens. Ali has an awesome look, cool entrance, and his innovative ring work makes him stand out from the crowd. Yet one glaring issue that could still be holding him back now that he is wrestling again could be his awkward finisher. Though not really an issue when his opponent is laying directly beneath the turnbuckles, the imploding 450 or 054 doesn't exactly offer itself up to use in other parts of the ring, arena, or even other match types. For example, could you see Ali performing the move off the top of a cage or off the top of the Titan Tron. Potential injuries aside, the move deprives Ali of the chance to use it to milk high drama situations like a cage or ladder match and therefore handcuffing himself from ever using these match types to fully get himself over. Number one, Project Champa. Tommaso Champa's character is pitch perfect, playing a man who is insanely driven to claiming and keeping hold of his dearest Goldie at any cost. Similar to that of Triple H's relationship with the World Heavyweight Championship in the early 2000s, wouldn't you say? Hmm? 
Although Ciampa had been a fantastic heel and his feud with Johnny Gargano will go down as one for the ages, his Achilles heel in terms of getting fully over as the bastard he is had always been one of the ways he ended his matches. Project Ciampa involved the owner setting up as if to go for a running powerbomb, only to send his opponent down into his knees upon landing. Brutal as it may look, logistically it's a bit of a nightmare and it tended to make fans cheer for him instead of the desired, you know, booing. If Ciampa wants to really break through the stratosphere as the top heel in the company, he needs to stick to viciously kneeing people in the face, in my opinion. And that's our list. Know of any other WWE finishes that are just way too complicated? Throw us your suggestions in the comment section below, and do not forget to like, share, and click that subscribe button. I've been Gareth Morgan from What Culture Wrestling. I'm sure you're going to have an amazing day. I hope I'm going to see you very, very soon. Thank you for watching.